But it's it's clear at that point in time that Frank doesn't so much care about her or their life together. He cares about getting ahead in, in TV because he has the opportunity to have dinner with the boss. And that's what he wants to do instead of spending Christmas with with uh, their friends. He wants Claire to go to dinner with him and the boss so that he can he can get in good there. That's approximately where his his trip to the past ends and then he calls Claire. And that's that's how they reconnect in the present is from him seeing her in the past. And they reconnect in the present and that's when he's he's at the homeless shelter just telling her the you know, forget forget these people. You need you need to think about yourself and you need to do your thing. The next ghost that visits them is is the ghost of Christmas presents. Christmas present, excuse me. Played by Carol Kane, who's like completely daffy. Mm-hmm. Kind of this this fairyish character. She got the wings and you know the almost looks like uh what Glinda the Good Witch in Wizard of Oz, only she's got wings now. Mm-hmm. She kind of has, like, that that costume going on. And then, uh, very much, she's very violent towards him. <laughs> Keeps beating him up, kicking him in the groin, and punching him in the face. <laughs> I don't know if this is in your notes, but I think she, because uh, there's, like, a, a little part where she grabs him by the lip. Yeah. And I guess she actually injured him and tore that <laughs> tissue that connects to your, like, your, like, in between your, was it your your teeth? Like, mm-hmm. your jawline? Yeah, and your, yeah, that, that little, that that little, little skin. Yeah. She tore that, I guess, and he had to take a, like, a little leave. That's painful. To, uh... Burn like hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she... It's... it's I think that she was kind of upset having to do that mm-hmm. <laughs> because they were they were pretty tight. But she just she spends like that first minute or two when she meets him just <laughs> beating him up, <laughs> slapping him around, yeah. <laughs> and they travel to his uh, his brother's house or his brother's apartment where they're playing the trivial pursuit, and then. Uh, that's the where the joke with the the VCR comes in because oh they open up the gift and it's a VCR, and then Frank realizes that Grace <laughs> sent him the VCR because he wanted to give him the towel, and then he visits he visits Grace and her family and there's there's obviously some trauma there. She uh, it's revealed later that she lost her husband. Husband was killed and her son. Calvin just is always silent, doesn't say anything, and she's taking them to doctors, trying to see, you know, what's wrong with them, why isn't he spoken. And then we we hear from from the ghost that the reason he hasn't spoken is because he saw his father killed in front of him. So that's that's why. And then she has to remind him, no, oh, remember when she wore all black and you know was a for six months. And he was he's so oblivious he just thought that it was a fashion statement. She wasn't she wasn't actually grieving. But he, he sees that and then he, he ends up where, where does she hit him with the toaster? I remember she hits him with the toaster. Is that at James's house or is that at, at Grace's house? I think that's a grace. He's like talking shit to her, and she just fucking smacks him with the toaster. Yeah, and then he falls underneath the. He's like in the in, in the sewer system, mm-hmm, basically. Mm-hmm. And then he sees one of the one of the homeless people that he met at at the shelter, who's just frozen to death because it's you know it's Christmas, it's winter time in the city, and he's cold. And then he. Then he kind of realizes how selfish he was and says, you know, why didn't you stay with, with Claire? She would have taken care of you. She would have kept you warm, protected you. And he's obviously talking about Herman, but also it's kind of resonating with him. You know, why didn't you stay with Claire? Herman, by the way, is, is Michael J. Uh, Pollard. It was... Uh, not sure if he's still with us. Good actor. Makes his... I think his debut was Bonnie and Clyde. 
which he's very good in. And then as, as Frank's trying to get out of the sewer, he busts through the door and ends up crashing through the set. Every time he comes back, he's kind of sitting on, he's on set while they're rehearsing the, the Scrooge show. Mm -hmm. And then at one point he goes to leave, gets in the elevator and runs into a guy, like a big tall guy in a cloak. And he freaks out because he thinks it's the Ghost of Christmas Future. And it, it actually is, but the actor on the show, mm -hmm. it's the Ghost of Christmas Future. And he makes that joke where he's like, oh, that whoever that guy is, he's going to be a big, big star. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's back in his office and he's, you know, taking a drink. And then you really see the, the true ghost of, or the ghost of Christmas Future come. And it's, you know, big a big skeleton Grim Reaper looking, looking type on the cloak. He grabs him and throws him in the elevator. And then they... <laughs> He has that bit where he opens up the, the cloak to see if he's real. And there's like, I don't even know if they're demons or... It's like, yeah, like lost souls or something yeah, that he has like... inside. And they're just like <laughs> screaming. <laughs> they're like trapped in the rib cage. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it takes them down the elevator and they go. And the first place they visit is like the mental hospital. Where Grace is visiting Calvin who still hasn't spoken. And then visits uh visits Claire in the future and then she's she's with her rich friends and is very put off by the fact that there's some some hungry orphans, some street urchins. And then just seeing that, Frank gets upset because she was such a good person and really cared about people and really wanted to help people and she took his advice basically and turned her back on all that and just became as selfish as he is. And then the last place that he takes him is crematorium. And he sees he sees his brother's wife there and he, he starts to get upset thinking that his brother had, had James had passed away. But then he sees James come in and he realizes that wait, who is this? No, this is me. And then he that's when he kinda has that change. He doesn't want to die, he wants to live. He tries to stop the casket from going into the... Mm -hmm. And then he ends up... Inside. Ends up inside it. Ends up popping out of the elevator again. And he's he's doing the, the Ebenezer Scrooge thing where he's, he's happy that he's alive and there's still time and he, he can change it. And that's when he gets confronted by Elliot mm -hmm. who came back basically to kill him. <laughs> With the shotgun and Elliot kind of chases him around the office for a little bit but then he he says hey I was wrong that I fired you I want to rehire you I'm gonna rehire you at you know double triple your salary I want you to you know help me with the executive duties and it's a little goofy the the meeting between those two <laughs> but still it, it's funny it's funny and then they they Burst out onto in the in the middle of the shot. <laughs> he just kind of busts out and hijacks the show, and everyone freaks out and they want to you know pull off the air and then they say no you know stay with them stay with them. He yeah, has Elliot go upstairs to the prompter room. Yes, yeah, so they won't cut him off. And he kind of keeps them at gunpoint so that they <laughs> that they don't take him off the air. And then there's a very. A very Murray improvised speech, which is how the climax of the film. I think, I, I don't know how the ending was as scripted, but that entire kind of rambling speech that Murray gives is improvised. They, I know that O'Donoghue and Glazer kind of had a hard time trying to figure out like what to write mm -hmm. or how to do that. So Murray just kind of went off the top of his head saying that, you know, on Christmas Eve, people are actually nice to each other. So he improvises this kind of emotional speech. And just him kind of wandering around, and you see you see the camera people on the show trying to stay with him, is basically what happened when they shot the, the ending of the movie. He was just kind of going off the top of his head in this improvised speech and wandering around the set and the camera was just basically following him the entire time trying to keep him around 
And I know it's improvised, but one of my favorite lines from that is the the thing about, hey, it's Christmas Eve. It's the one time of year when we're, we all act a little nicer. We smile a little easier. You know, we cheer a little bit more. And he says on... For a couple hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. And I think that's a good line. Whether it was written or, you know, straight up ad lib by, by Bill Murray, I think it's a great line. That, hey, you know, we might, I don't want to say be assholes the rest of the year, but, you know, this is a special time of year and we try to act better. You wouldn't know it at the time. Hearing some of the horror stories come out of the service industry at this time of year. But I think it's it's a good sentiment saying that, you know, at this point, at this time of year, we we are the people, the inherently good people that we that we should be. So that whole scene plays out, Murray does his thing, and then at the end when he kind of reaches that natural stopping point, he gets like an applause from the cast and crew. I know that I don't think the writers are very happy about it, but that's that's Bill Murray. They didn't really have an ending scripted, so he gave him the ending. And then, you know, he, he makes a shout out to Claire, kind of a plea for, for things to change. He wants to be with her. So she sees this on the TV at the the shelter and has to get down to the the IBC building, the station building. And then that's when she gets picked up by the ghost of Christmas past. And she says, hey, I need to get there in three minutes. And he just says, what floor? (laughs) So I wonder what happened because they never actually show her show up at the building. She just kind of wanders onto the set at some point. So did she make it down there and that... That amount of time, and how? That's a plot, <laughs> but I won't argue it because it's pretty funny. Well, I mean they they did say that they shot a sh- like a lot, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that didn't make it into the to the final cut because it didn't make sense. But maybe that's why. Yeah, a lot of the stuff got cut. According to Glazer and O'Donohue. They said only about forty percent of what they wrote mm-hmm. was uh, was there, and even even what was on screen wasn't exactly how they had written it. So there's given that that quote from O'Donoghue, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, they weren't really happy with with how everything played out, and I I can get where they're coming from too. It kind of sucks to have this script that was that you were really proud of and you really thought kind of kind of represented this alternate take on on Christmas and a Christmas carol. And to have it, you know, chopped up and butchered and have what you wrote not be what's up on screen. I can, I can understand the frustration from that. Like I said, that doesn't make me love the movie any less because I do love the film. Mm-hmm. Regardless. But, you know, that at the very end, he goes through that speech and all that and then is is in not interrupted by Calvin, but Calvin goes up to him and kind of tugs on his arm to let him know there's there's one more thing, and he says what? He's like, did I you know did I miss something? And Calvin says, God bless us everyone. And the the tiny the tiny Tim line from the story, and then he's he's really taken aback by that, as is Grace, who's you know. Very excited and, and moved by the fact that he finally did speak again after the, what, five years or mm-hmm. so? Mm-hmm. Since her, uh, her husband was killed and, and Calvin was, was quiet. And then, maybe it's cheesy, maybe it's corny, but I like how they kind of end the film with them kind of breaking out in song and singing the, the old Jackie Del Shannon, uh, Put a Little Love in Your Heart. And then that's you see you see Frank look up in the rafters and see all the ghosts, including the now uh, Herman as a as an angel. All the little the little lost souls and the ghost of Christmas Future's cloak, are, yeah, like they, partying. Yeah, they have gifts and stuff, <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> candy canes and 